In the last video we looked at overwriting local variables on the stack where we just overwrote a simple integer variable with anything but zero in order to bypass the login check. This time we're going to look at a slightly more complex example but we're going to go through the same checks as we did last time. So first of all I'm going to compile the binary 32-bit, no pi, make sure execution on the stack's allowed, although th honestly to be honest this, this isn't really important for these early examples anyway uh, and no can errors as well. So let's compile that we get a warning to say we should be using fgets, gets is dangerous, and we know that of course. Let's check the file type now, overwrite. All the same stuff, 32-bit, LSB executable, it's dynamically linked and it's not stripped. If you're not sure what all that means, go back to the last video. And let's also check sec. Again, we don't really need to because we know what protections are enabled because we set them, but just get in the habit of going through these basic file checks and see that we don't have any protections enabled here. Awesome, so before we have a look at the source code, let's first of all just try and run the binary. It just says yes, and we'll try to put in some data. And it comes back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so let's try that again, entering more A's. And this time it came back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 0. So we've overwritten something. Let's try it again. Let's try and put in some more A's. And this time we've got 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, which we know if we unhex that value, we're going to get a, 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 a. So we've overwritten this variable with these a's. So let's go and take a look at the source code and see what actually happened. Okay, so once again, I'll open this up with Codium. And let's see what we have. We've got our main method down here. So this is where the program's going to start off. And all it's going to do is call do input and then return. Do input has this key set one two three four five six seven eight in hex, which we saw whenever we ran the program. It has a 32-byte buffer, and it's calling. It's going to say printf yes. It's going to use that dangerous gets call that we've seen, which isn't going to make sure that the value we enter fits in this buffer. And then it's going to check does the key equal zero x dead beef in hex. If it does, it's going to say good job. If not, then it's going to print out the key. So the goal obviously is for us to overwrite this variable. There's no way that this program should allow this variable to be overwritten. There's nothing which the user should be able to provide as an input which should affect this variable. So the only way we have of modifying this is to overflow the buffer and overwrite the variable on the stack. So now that we've had a look at the program, let's go and see if we can actually do this. We know that it was a 32-byte buffer, so what we'll do is use Python 2, and I'll show why we need to use Python 2 shortly. If, well, you can use Python 3, but it'll be a, a lot more complex to get the right output. So we'll print out 32 times a plus, and then we'll put in some other value here. And this is the value is was dead beef. And let's just show what happens, first of all, if we put in dead beef like this. Oh, I didn't put a print statement. Okay, so we print that. We've got our a a a a dead beef. We can run the program. Oh, not like that. I thought I was in GDB for a second. We can run the program, enter that in, and you'll see that what we get is this hex value. So again, we can't just put in that string in ASCII and expect it to print out properly. And also note that now that we've printed out the value that it returned to us, it's in reverse order, D-E-A-D. -E so if we wanted that to say dead beef, we would actually have to, let's do that again. Oh, not that one. Let me grab this. And let's actually do D A E D. And we get this value this time. Let's unhex it. And now we have dead. So basically, this is the endianness we saw whenever we checked the file type that the program is LSB, so least significant bit. So you have MSB and LSB, and it just depends which bit is going to be the biggest and which bit is going to be the smallest, what side of the byte that's going to be. So uh, if we're entering in some values, we want it to say dead beef, we're going to have to do it in reverse order. Okay, so let's put it together. Let's do, let me bring up that print statement again. And this time we're going to use hex. We need to do backslash x, de, but then we need to go back because we're doing it in reverse order. So backslash x, ad, back again, backslash x, be, back again, backslash x, ef. Print that out. It's not actually recognizable, so we can't copy and paste this value 
So in order for us to send this off to the program, we're going to want to send this to a payload. In fact, let me just also show, if we change that to Python 3, I'm going to need some print, some brackets around the print statement. Change it to Python 3. And we get a different output for those hex bytes. So basically you have to decode them in some way or convert them for Python 3. I just use Python 2 if I'm doing buffer overflows. Apart from if you're using Pwn tools. If you're using Pwn tools, use Python 3. You don't need to worry about this stuff. Okay, so let's do our Python 2 command again. Let's send it to a file called payload. And that means, although we can't copy and paste it, what we can do is just run the program and then send that payload in. We do that and we get, yes, good job, and we get our dead beef back. So just like the previous example, we're going to open this up in Geardra. I'm going to use that Geardra auto script to do it for me. And then we're also going to have a look at this in GDB Pwn Debug and have a look at a very basic Pwn Tools script for it as well. So into Geardra, let's go over to our functions. Let's open up the main function. And you can see we've got a do input, so we can double click on that. We can see all of our code here. Notice that we have this in hex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but the dead beef doesn't look the same. So you have a couple of options. You can go over to the left hand side to the assembly where you can actually see it in the proper hex value here. Or if you want to see it like that on the decompiled code on the right, you can right click it and go and convert it. So let's convert it to char and we'll see dead beef. So this is all very similar. Again, we might want to go and update some of these things, say that's the key, say this is the buffer. And now we pretty much have the same code that we actually have in the C, original C code. We have all of our addresses here as well. So we know that our comparison happens right here, this line 14. And it's actually this jump not zero here. So you can see it's comparing at this address. We can take a copy of that and we'll go and put it into GDB, although we can also find it in there as well. And then it's going to do this comparison. So let's go and take a look at it in GDB. We'll go GDB, Pwn Debug, pass in overwrite, and again, just the usual stuff, see what functions we've got. We can disassemble main, we can disassemble do input, and have a look through the code. We're going to set up that breakpoint at the comparison, so I'm just going to use the one that I copied from Geardra. Oh, sorry, let me change that. That's the one we wanted. Let me delete the breakpoints, set that one again. Just missing the 0x at the beginning of that. So that's it now. And we could actually just, if we want to see what was there, we can do disassemble and disassemble at that address. Sorry, without the star this time. And that will show us the code as well. All right, so we've got that breakpoint set up. Let's try and run the program. It's asking us for some input. Let's put in those. Let's first of all, just do a standard entry. We hit the breakpoint, we've got this comparison, and again it's checking EBP minus 0xc with dead beef. So let's go ahead and print what's at that location. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, if we were cheating here, we could just take a copy of this and say, set this address with the pointer, set this to equal 0x dead beef. Let's check that again. And this time we have it set to dead beef. So if we now hit continue, it says good job. So we just cheated by manipulating what was actually in the register, or on the stack, sorry. Um, so let's run this again. And this time we're gonna put in the, send in the payload. So we can do the same thing, just pass in the payload with the angular bracket. We hit our breakpoint, And again, let's just go and repeat that print it out and see this time we've got dead beef so that's good we could step through these so we know that it's jump not equal so if these two don't equal it's going to jump down to do input plus one four eight otherwise it's going to go through these commands here so let's hit next we've got the jump not equal so it's going to go down here and you'll see it's gone here instead of jumping to do input one four eight let's hit continue and there we go good job and let's go and see how we can accomplish the same thing with Pwn Tools. So I'm going to open up this exploit script. Very similar to the last one. So we import Pwn Tools, everything from Pwn Tools. We start a process with the binary. And this time we're going to send line after. After we receive the question mark, we're going to send A times 32. 
plus p32 dead beef. So this is specifying that it we want to pack it as a 32-bit address. And this means we don't have to worry about doing all that endianness stuff where we go backslash x ef backslash xbe, you know, all in reverse order. So that's going to do all that for us. If we wanted if we were doing a 64-bit, we could do p64. Or we can actually tell Pwn Tools to have a look at the binary and work out is it 64-bit or 32-bit? And then it'll do all of that for us. We don't even need to tell it what type of address it is going to be. I'm not going to cover that now. We'll go through a little bit more of these Pwn Tool scripts each video. I don't want to confuse everybody if you're just getting started off with this stuff. But this is basically doing the same thing as we just did there. So we can run Python exploit. It runs through and we get good job. In fact, one thing I will do, let's go and set the context here. So we can say context.log level equals, I'm going to set that to debug. Anytime you're having problems with a Pwn Tool script, set your context.log level to debug, run the script again, and you'll actually see what's being sent and what's being received. And this can really help in terms of, in terms of learning and in terms of debugging. So for example, if you were doing some shellcode, and you weren't really sure how to write the shellcode yourself. Well, you could actually use Pwn Tools to do it for you and then use the debug mode to see how it built up that shellcode and then you'll learn a bit more each time. Okay, so that's it for overwriting local variables on the stack part two. In the next video, we'll be going through a return to win style challenge. So we'll actually be redirecting the flow of execution to a function of our choice, which so far we haven't done. So far, we've just been overwriting variables, but actually there might be a function somewhere in the program that has something interesting in it which we want to access when we're not supposed to be able to. So we'll see how we can do that in the next episode. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.